Hello and welcome back to Asian Cinema Season 2 and continuing on with the Naoko Ogigami retrospective series, uh, this time covering her 2012 film Rent-A-Cat, uh, Rent-A-Neko, I believe. Uh, she sings a song throughout the film, the main character, and it was just stuck in my head for so long after I first watched it. And I was trying to figure out what it was. It's uh, Rento neko Neko, Neko. And I'm like, what is she saying? And then I read, is that how you say cat? And I asked Connie, I was like, how do you, what's cat in Japanese? She's like, Neko. I was like, oh, okay, <laughs> that makes sense. And I don't know why that didn't click in my, my pea brain, obviously, that that is what she was singing. The film's called rent a cat and she runs a rent a cat service. But regardless, she sings this song as she's uh, pushing around a cart full of cats with a megaphone going rent a cat and asking people just out, you know, out of the blue, just and any passersby, are you feeling lonely? I'll rent you a cat. And this is her kind of philosophy on life is that if you are feeling lonely, if you have a hole in your life that needs to be filled, a cat can be the, uh, the perfect substitute. And what I like about that idea is that, uh, and I believe the character's name is uh, Sayako. She is a single woman who has all these cats, she seems to have just collected them over the years, and uh, we see her at her home with all the cats everywhere, and, and there's very comedic scenes where she's kind of sitting around talking to all the cats, and if you've owned cats, and if you're a cat lover, and you've had cats in the past or present, uh, you know what it's like, you do talk to your cats, and you kind of, it's almost like a, a game where like you look at them, and they're looking at you, and you're making eye, eye contact with your cat, and you're saying something to them and they're looking at you as if they can understand what you're saying. You know they can't. And then they'll they'll make a movement as if like they understood. It's like, did, did they understand? And obviously you know you know deep down they don't, but it's kind of a fun kind of fantasy that you get involved in. At least me and Connie as um cat owners and lovers. And it's always fun to almost get lost in that fantasy that maybe they did understand me and and obviously there is actually an understanding between you know uh, humans and animals that can develop when you uh, are close and you uh, you know you see each other daily you get, get into your routines you do and the, the the cats certainly have their way of communicating without using language but this film wasn't really about that the film is about this woman who is trying to help other people uh, who are lonely to kind of feel better about themselves when she herself is also kind of quite lonely. And it doesn't veer too much into the direction of, you know, she's a happy-go-lucky kind of the, what is that term, the manic pixie dream girl. You know, kind of like this, um, uh, this kind of, what's, what's the term? This kind of female character that just doesn't really exist, that, that, that many, many people write into movies where it's just like, oh, the, the crazy carefree girl who kind of, you know, uh, is, is wild and all this kind of stuff. And she, you know, she's, again, you know what I'm talking about. It, it's not that. Um, you could almost see it descending into that, but I think that'd be too cliched for what Ogigami does with her characters that she writes in her films. But neither is it kind of really down in the dumps, like, oh, this lonely woman who's trying to help other people who are lonely, but she's lonely herself. No, it doesn't really go too far in either direction, which I really like. It finds a nice kind of middle ground where you're intrigued by her kind of story, what's going to happen with her. Uh, at a time, I think she writes something on her wall, like, at a certain point, I'll be married, or something like that. It's been quite a while since I saw the film, but... She's almost actively trying to think in her head positively about finding, you know, a, a human partner to share her life with and is very conscious of her kind of uh, age and that she should be kind of settling down. And a lot of the film is about repetition. There is uh, a few times when she's in her garden and the neighbor will kind of pop up and just kind of very, very disparagingly throw an insult at her. And we'll do the same thing over and over again. And the way she reacts to it is interesting. And also the way that um, we see her renting cats to certain strangers. Uh, there are a number of them throughout the film. You know, she'll say the same things, you know, and it'll always come up like, how much money do you need to, to kind of... Um, for me to rent this cat from you and she'll she'll say the same thing every time and so there's this re repetitious quality is that even a word to the film which in a way is, is kind of showing the rut that she's in where she is just kind of going round and around but she is helping other people and as i was saying earlier it's it's like a substitute for this kind of hole that people have that they need to be filled in their lives something that's missing 
uh, and that's kind of represented quite li you know literally uh, in some cases where like there's one man who has a hole in his sock <laughs> you know and she's like oh you have a hole in your sock you know so you have a hole that needs to be filled and I've got a cat who can kind of provide you with the you know emotional uh, uh, care that can help you in that regard and I forget the other one I think there's a donut that has a hole in it or something like that so it's kind of very playful with the way that it kind of throws these metaphors into the story and one of the people who she comes across is at this car rental service and she's looking through this list of all the cars and they're divided by classes like you know and then she's wondering like you know would you do that with cats you know can an actual living creature be classified as um, you know this one's better than the other and that kind of brings up this whole kind of idea of, the, of like the class system and whether people you know are better than other people because of certain you know certain elements of the way that we live our lives and the, the wealth that we have maybe I'm looking into that too too much but that's certainly part of the idea she's going for especially in the sense of like oh this cat is, is a bit more prestigious and you know the the uh, the breed is, is a lot more expensive and and her philosophy is well, well no like we're, we're all the same you know, there shouldn't be a kind of class system here. And I like that. Some of the humor at times was a little bit overbearing and over the top for me. Uh, not a lot. There's just a few beats, a few gags that kind of the main character, Psycho, she's like, like reacts really over the top. And it kind of, yeah, I didn't like that because it, it didn't fit within what I'd already grown to expect from humor in Ogigami's films up to that point. But I, I really enjoyed it just just for like the seeing all the cats. I mean, really, I'm, I'm that easy to please. I'm already in the bag. If you've got a movie that's got loads of cats in it, I love those creatures. And they're just so interesting and funny and unique and independent. And to see lots of different cats in the film was great. But I, there was something quite charming of this woman walking around with the carts of cats. Although I was just kind of like, what if they just all run off? <laughs> you know? Like she really trusts her cats to just sit in there and just wait to be picked up. And, uh, you know, people who come past who think she's a crazy cat lady, they, they, they kind of go down that area, which is, you know, obvious. And, and really, I, I felt like I wanted a bit more out of the film as far as the resolution, even though I, I have, again, been trained at this point to kind of understand that Ogigami's films aren't really about this grand resolution. They aren't really about this big payoff. It's more about just showing something and just creating a character and hanging out with the character for a bit. So I just felt like this one could have benefited a little bit more from a better ending uh, for the character and, you know, just something a bit more. But then again, it, the, the repetitious cyclical, again, I'm, I'm, I'm getting confused about whether repetitious is even a word. Uh, I, I just, anyway, regardless, the cyclical nature of the story, that perhaps that's part of the point and that she is stuck in this rut. Maybe it's not the worst thing in the world that she is stuck in this rut, um, but can her cats, which she feels can fill a hole for other people's lives, do they fill a hole for her? Uh, you know, do they kind of uh, help bridge that gap that she has uh, without a partner? Does she need a partner? And uh, so, yeah, it was interesting. I, I really liked it a lot, but I just, I wanted more of it at the same time. I felt like an Ogigami film focused on cats uh, would be like my dream movie. Like it could be like my favorite. Maybe I was kind of just hyping it up too much in my own mind, which can absolutely happen. Expectations always tie into it. And perhaps when I see it again, I might enjoy it quite a bit more. And actually having uh, now since received uh, Daisuke's video on the film and, and listened to his thoughts, uh, the way he talks about it actually, which you'll hear in just a second, uh, really made me want to reevaluate the film and watch it again. So I, I do feel like I will enjoy it more the second time around. I might even watch it with Connie, see what she thinks of the film. But it's definitely worth watching, and it's a really charming film. I really, really loved the the actress who played Sayako, if that is her name, I, I think. Uh, she just uh, she really had a great personality that she brought to the film, uh, very playful and and fun. And but again, not entirely one way not entirely the other it felt like an actual fleshed out proper character uh, an actual person i should say and uh, i just found it really charming and uh, enjoyable so there we go I, I suppose for me it's it's down the lower end of my favorites for, from ogigami but i still really enjoyed it and uh Again, now even talking about it myself, I, I'm kind of itching to go back to it and watch it again. So that's my thoughts on rent cat And uh, now we head over to Tokyo to hear what Daisuke has to say about the film. Greetings from Tokyo. This is Daisuke. And I'd like to talk to you now about this film, which is from 2012 by Naoko Ogigami called Renta Neko. This is a film starring uh, Mikako Ichikawa as the main character of Sayoko and you can see her there we go sorry about that 
you can see her on the cover there. Uh, she is the main character of Sayoko, and she has a very interesting trait in that she seems to be attracting a lot of cats, and thus she uh, runs a little business called Rent a Cat, wherein she rents out cats to people whom she thinks uh, are lonely, and therefore she thinks that renting out cats will be a nice way for them to fill in the heart, a hole in their hearts, as she says. So in other words, a, a way for them to uh, not feel lonely anymore. And this is an interesting conceit because not only does she use the cats in order to help them with their loneliness, but she also forms a kind of friendship or bond between these people in uh, various ways. So the people that she rents the cats out to, she also engages with and talks to and forms some kind of bond or friendship. Now, this film is really wonderful, a fantastic film on many levels, but one of those levels is that this film does not necessarily make everything so happy and so cheerful all the time. This is great because uh, the character of Sayoko, she is a well-rounded character. She is not so carefree all the time. She does have certain frustrations in her life and she does uh, express those to us, the viewer. You know, she doesn't love everyone. Uh, she has certain frustrations with some of the people that she meets. And uh, she also has certain frustrations with respect to her love life or lack thereof. And I think that's a great thing because she is a very positive character overall. But her positivity is not so uh, grand for it to be insufferable. No, on the contrary, it's very balanced out with her really... Uh, reasonable and human um, reactions to certain situations that uh, uh, occur uh, with respect to her situation. So I think this is a lovely, uh, well-balanced depiction of this uh, very eccentric and uh, quite appealing and attractive character. Uh, and I think for those of you who are cat lovers, I think this film has a lot. Um, but uh, even for those who are not necessarily cat lovers, I think this film is very charming indeed. Um, I don't hate cats, but I am not, I admit I'm not a full-fledged cat lover per se. Uh, and that being said, you know, even for someone like me, uh, again, I don't hate cats. I like cats, but I don't, uh, I'm not uh, uh, keen on, on having them all the time. But um, with that being said, this is a really delightful film and it really won me over in terms of cat ownership. So perhaps one of these days I might consider it. As with other Naoko Ogigami films, there are lovely lines of um, uh, thematic uh, exploration that we have already seen in her other films. So for example, uh, Sao uh, Sayoko can be seen to be a very maybe unique or eccentric character. So in that sense, perhaps she is not necessarily one with her environment, but uh, I think at the same time, she is very much at peace with herself. She knows who she is and she realizes who she is. And I think that is a, a lovely, refreshing take on uh, the way um, uh, on a young Japanese woman in this contemporary society of Japan. And uh, she is very reminiscent of the characters we have already seen in the past. Uh, think, for example, of the characters in Megane, um, also the characters in, in uh, Kamome Diner, Seagull Diner. Yes, my goodness. They, all these characters have a, a slight eccentricity about them, but it is a very charming one. And it is a, uh, an indication of their greater, uh, broader, uh, positive uh, character, which is a very refreshing trait and one that makes me very happy to watch as a viewer of this film. There are also other aspects of this film that are explored that 
I think are uh, lovely touches. Uh, again, Ogigami explores aspects of Japanese-ness, Japanese culture that um, I find very appealing and uh, quite neat, actually. So, um, for instance, the scene where the uh, Sayoko is thinking back to her time as a a uh, student, a young, uh, must have been middle school, middle school student, and uh, she's thinking about a particular boy that she met, and the boy uh, gives her, and they both share uh, kind of a summer, it's called a, um, an ice lolly, or a little a bit of ice candy, and it's called Gari Gari Kun in Japan, and this is a pretty famous piece of uh, ice candy that you can get uh, pretty much anywhere in Japan even now for a relatively inexpensive price. So I'm a personal, uh, to be, yeah, I'm a, a real big fan of Gari Gari Kun actually. I really like to have those and my children as well. So especially when it's a summer, uh, when it's summer, we usually enjoy those Gari Gari Kun. So uh, that is something that is very much, uh, I think many people in Japan would appreciate that a little uh, characteristic. It might be equivalent, um, I'm not sure uh, if this is right, but maybe like in the United Kingdom, maybe it's something like a Cornetto, um, you know, something that it's, it's a little ice thing that uh, maybe everyone knows. So um, uh, that's a little piece of, let's say, Japanese culture, so to speak. Um, there is also the idea of um, uh, I love the idea here of uh, how Japan or Japanese people uh, view the idea of services. Again, this is a story about services and about how she is renting out cats. So it's a service that she's providing. And there's a, there's a contract that these people sign and there's a little inspection period that these people sign. So this is a very, um, uh, this is kind of a, it feel, feel, seems to me to be a very uh, uh, a Japanese way to carry out a transaction. You know, there's a clear piece of writing and there's an inspection period. And um, um, also, there's a really lovely moment where many of these people who are renting out or who are borrowing cats are saying, you know, how much is this? And she points, like, she goes like this, right? And they immediately think uh, 10,000 yen, which is the equivalent of about 100 US dollars um, and then she says no and then she's oh is, do you mean a hundred thousand yen which is therefore the equivalent of about one thousand dollars and then she says no she says one thousand yen which is the equivalent of about ten dollars US dollars so I love that moment because uh, you know, these people are thinking uh, that the services themselves are very expensive so this is a um, uh, this is a nice little touch uh, that uh, the character of Sayoko uh, brings. You know. And also there is a real lovely moment where uh, there is a discussion about uh, ranks and classes uh, with respect to cars, but it's also applied to cats. And I think this is a, a, a very, it, it's, it's not so uncommon to see this kind of uh, ranking or class uh, organization in terms of of rental properties. Um, and I think that's pretty uh, normal, but uh, Ogigami puts a little bit of a spin on it, which I never thought about before, but it, it's something that is very, um, it, it's a very astute comment that Ogigami is making. And I, I really appreciated uh, her commentary on that. And it, it's, it's a commentary, I think, uh, on broader Japanese culture as a whole, um, but also just on uh, a, a more universal uh, comment on uh, how one perceives uh, society around oneself. It's a it's a very fascinating take, and I appreciate Ogiyami here for for uh, for her uh, insight. And I love Ogiyami also here because she does not succumb to the uh, kind of uh, 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 cliche in her films. You know, there is there are certain moments in the narrative I think that she could very easily. Uh, sort of uh, 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 succumb to cliche, and that would have been unfortunate. Uh, for instance, there might have been a certain way in which a certain romance could have occurred, but she instead lets her characters 
uh, grow and develop within the space that she has created. And this is something that we have already seen with her other films in her past filmography, and this is no exception. I love this film. I really love this film. This film makes me so happy. I, I... I'm just so happy when I see this, and it's filled with many moments of truth and honesty, and sometimes that honesty is a little bit sad and a little bit hard to take, but all in all, the uh, main character here, Sayoko, is the anchor. Uh, it, it, everything is uh, about her, or essentially the effect that she has, and she is a, a lovely uh, ray of sunshine, if you know what I mean. And uh, therefore, it is such a pleasure to watch her and this film and the world that Ogigami has created. A lovely film. Absolutely lovely film. I really do love this film. Um, anyway, this has been a Japanese DVD of this, but this, I think, is also uh, equipped with... Yes, it has English subtitles, so uh, if you are interested, please uh, have a look. I know there's also a Blu-ray, uh, which is a little bit more expensive, but the DVD can might be... Uh, found used at a really good price, uh, so hopefully uh, that might uh, be something of interest to you. Anyway, my friends, uh, thank you very much, and I will talk to you again very soon. Cheers. Hey, you're all right by me. <laughs> Apart from the fact he throws cans and call it into a tree. <laughs> yeah, he's really cool. Yeah, he's really cool. Not quite as cool as you, cause... <laughs>